Our Father, we thank you very much for a new day. We pray that you do a new thing in the lives of all in Jesus' name. Let your name be honored and glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We started with eternal laws of laboring to gain the world. It's not wrong to live in the world and work to get your daily bread. But for you to give your life, your soul, and everything to this world is eternal loss. It's eternal loss. So you have to endure the pain, the affliction, the persecution, the cross to gain eternal life. If you have decided for Jesus, don't allow the devil to take your eternal life from your hands. Hold it fast and nobody will receive your crown. We are looking at the last in that series, the exchange that results in eternal loss. The exchange that results in eternal loss. We look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. You turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 16. I will read verse 26. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what shall a man gain in exchange for his soul? It's Jesus who said this, and it's a very serious statement. If you put the world and everything inside, the buildings, all the money in the banks in the whole world, the cars, and all the properties, all the gold, the mining areas, all the oil, the oil producing countries, and everything on one side of a scale. And you put the human soul on one side of a scale. What Jesus said is what I'm trying to explain to you. The side of the scale where the soul is will be heavier and weightier than the other side for, with all the things of the world and the money inside. That's why Jesus said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The exchange that results in eternal loss. And when you look at the world in which we live today, many people have exchanged their souls That's eternal for temporary things of this world, which is going to pass away, which is going to be on fire, which is going to perish, which is going to be destroyed. What a loss. What a loss. What a loss. What a foolish decision to labor for the wind, to pay for bubbles with our dear lives, to run after the mirage of life, and in so doing, miss heaven and throw our souls away into hell. How foolish it is. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17, Hebrews chapter 12, a story is told of a man who was having a precious possession but because of what he will eat today, he sold that eternal thing and collected what was temporal. In Hebrews chapter 12, 16 and 17, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his bed right. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau, for a bowl of pottage, lost his birthright and lost heaven as well. Today we have some people who, by the grace of God, have been saved by grace in their homes, people bear good testimony concerning them, that their lives are changed, 
their lives are transformed. They are born again. Their names are written in the book of life. They are going to heaven. But a problem may come. Maybe poverty. Maybe loss of job. Maybe failure in examination. And because of that, they become so much offended to the point that, well, take your Christianity, take your Bible, take your church. I won't go again. You are just like Esau. You have thrown away eternal blessing for temporary things of this world. The exchange that results in eternal loss. If you do that, it's very, very dangerous. What do I say concerning Lord's wife? The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah came. And because of the intercession of Abraham, Lord and his family were to escape. But when the opportunity came for them to escape, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah was deep-seated in the heart of Lord's wife. So even though the people left the place, Sodom did not leave this woman. Eventually she lost. Let him read that place to you. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. And that is what many people are doing today. Whatever they are doing in this world is seated deep in their hearts. So even when they are in church house and preaching is going on, their mind is not there. The pastor is wasting time. Leave me for me to go and do my business. Pastor, will you want to finish the preaching today or the Bible today? Uh, it would have been better for Lord for her to have left the business as Sodom and Gomorrah and escaped, but she didn't do that. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. When they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, escape for thy life. Your life is more precious than goose. Your life is more precious than anything in this world. Eternal life is far, far better than the life we are living here. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. What a clear statement, very distinct, no ambiguity in it. And Lord said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord, behold now, thy servant had found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnify thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape either. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. So he pleaded, and his plea was granted. In verse 26, when they were running away and going, this, the instruction was that nobody should look back. But look at verse 26. But his wife, that is Lord, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And she became a pillar of salt. Why is it that some people take decision to follow Christ? But those decisions do not last for a year, two or three. Why is it that some people decide to go to heaven, but they fall and fail by the side of the road? All because their hearts and their minds are not in those decisions. So the things of the world are calling them, beckoning on them. Satan is showing them as he showed Jesus. All the things of this world, the pleasures in the world, and all the beauty of the women and everything. So some people can't go far. Lord's wife could not go far because she looked back. When you look back, you will see. But it will be eternal damnation and destruction. The exchange that results in eternal loss. Don't look back. Go straight ahead. And she decided to look back. And she, she became a pillar of salt. In Mark chapter 10, verse 17, the exchange that results in eternal loss. Mark chapter 10. I'm reading verse 17. From there we look at 21 and 22. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, 
there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Good master, what should I do to have eternal life? She, he asked for a very good and the best in life, eternal life. Many people don't bother themselves with that one. The life they have in this world is all what they know. So they are doing everything to protect that life. A little pain, they will go to see their doctor. They will lie down, they will put something on them and test them and all those things. And they have all the medication and everything to keep this life. But I want to tell you, no matter how long you keep this life, one day you are going to lose it. There's a life beyond this life called eternal life. It is, it is taking you to heaven where you will live forever without dying. Praise the Lord. And that is what we should concern ourselves with. This young man saw Jesus, that he has eternal life for him. So he ran and said, Jesus, I want this eternal life. Then Jesus gave him the conditions for this eternal life. Let him read some of them to you. Verse 18. Let's read from verse 20. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And the Bible says, He was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. He had buildings. If it is today, he may have cars, those days, maybe camels and horses. And then all his heart was inside his house. The heart was inside the possessions. The heart was inside the money. Then Jesus told him that if you want to go to heaven, go and sell everything you have. When you meet the poor people, you give it to them so that you can be a focused man. You can be single-minded. You can look at the direction I'm going and go with me. You'll be able to work with me and make heaven. A man look at Jesus up and there and say, you don't know what you are saying. You small boy, do you know how we talk before we get money? And you tell me to go and sell everything and give to the poor. When I was looking for my money, going through the sun and the heat of the sun, where were the poor, pe uh, the poor people? And you want me to give all what I've told for my, my I used the life, my life to toil for, to give it to them. If that is the only condition, take your heaven. And Jesus also took his heaven. Now, wherever the man is, he has seen that he was a foolish man. Because Jesus wants him to lose what he cannot keep, so that he'll be able to keep what he cannot lose. Hallelujah. When you get to heaven, you will never lose heaven. When you get eternal life, when you get over there, you will never lose it. But the man did not understand. And many people don't understand today. Because they think the world is just here. So all what they are looking for is money, building. We also look for money. We also look for building. But our hearts are not inside money and building. Our hearts are with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Our heart is in heaven, even though we are living in this world. So it is better for you and better for me to listen to the counsel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said the man was sad at that saying and went away grieved, annoyed, angry, for he had great possessions. Great possessions. And these possessions have become a stumbling block to many people from making heaven. I pray to not be a stumbling block to you. Amen. You will make heaven at last. Amen. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16 through to 21. Luke chapter 12, 16 through to 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, Thou hast much goods laid off for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. 
But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. You have buildings in all the regions of Ghana. You have buildings in all the European countries. You have buildings in all the French-speaking countries. But you don't have salvation in the accounts in heaven. No holiness, no sanctification. When you die and your houses are dead with you, where will you spend eternity? It's a question you need to answer. And the answer is very, very important because the answer is an eternal answer for your doom or for your bliss. Bliss of heaven or doom of hell. So you have to really answer the question before it becomes too late for you. Many people are looking at people who are serious and they have dedicated themselves to the service of the Lord. They run away from sin and all the crookedness and corruption of this world. They see them as foolish people. But the Bible is declaring to us the one who is the greatest fool. He said the greatest fool is not somebody who is running after God and any money that will come in his way and is not got in the right way, he will reject it. He's not a fool. He's the wisest of all people. Because they, this man had everything money could buy, but he didn't have salvation. He didn't have any account in heaven. So God saw him as a fool. Don't follow that foolish man to become a fool. Make sure that your life is saved. The world and all that the world may offer you is temporal and will soon pass away. The soul is eternal. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Are you wavering and following Christ afar off like Peter when the people were beating Jesus and making him ready to go and crucify him. He was following Christ afar off. He didn't want the people to know that he was a disciple of Christ. Are you following Christ afar off? What shall it profit a man? Are you indulging in flesh, in the flesh, and yielding to the temptations of fornication and adultery? What shall it profit a man? If he shall gain all the beautiful women in the world, and lose his own soul. And a woman too, if you gain all the handsome men of this world, with all the riches of this world, and lose your own soul. Are you compromising your faith so as to make ends meet? What shall it profit a man? If you can get all the best food to eat during your lifetime, and you go and vomit everything in hell, what shall it profit a man? If you shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Are you lowering the standard and committing secret sins because of the fear of man? Are you giving in to the enticement of the world and its amusements? Today, everywhere you, even your phone in your hand, when you open your phone, the things you don't want to see, they will come and meet you. If you are not a man of decision, you watch everything and destroy your heart and destroy your soul. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, are you drawing back because of persecution, poverty, or sickness? What shall it profit a man? Lazarus was not healed of his source when he died. The source did not follow him to heaven. He left everything behind. His soul and spirit was carried by angels of God to heaven. Now he's enjoying eternally in heaven. So don't say that because of my sickness, even if I'll go to a fetish priest, I'll go to some place and get healed and forsake Christ. Never say that. Never say that. Never say that. Stay with Christ. Stay with Christ. If it is poverty and you are praying and working towards it to come out of, of, of poverty and you have not come, don't use any dubious means, any crooked means to get wealth and lose your soul. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Are you pursuing business to the neglect of daily devotion and church service? Some people don't do quiet time again. They are haste to go and do business. They will forsake their quiet time for one week, one month. Where will you be when you neglect God and the quiet time, morning devotion? What shall it profit a man? 
Some even don't go to church. The day they go to church is the market day for their town. So every time they are in the market looking for money, what shall it profit you if you can gain the whole money in the market and lose your own soul? Are you becoming weak and discouraged because of marriage or childbearing? You are looking for life partner you have not got. Because of that, you have thrown away your Bible. You have married. You have no children. Because of that, you have thrown away your Bible. Please, when we are going to heaven, it's not the number of children we have got we are going to present at the gate of heaven to be allowed to enter. What shall it profit a man? If you have all the children, the people in the world as your children, and you lose heaven, be wise. What shall it profit a man? Are you looking back because of the ridicule and pressure of your classmates? Don't be like lost wife to become a pillar of salt. What shall it profit a man? If you gain all the classmates as friends, if you gain all the graduates as friends and you lose your soul, when you enter into hell, your classmates will not come with you if they are born again. What is the devil using to deceive you and to turn you back from the narrow way? Is it jewelry? Is it money? Is it business? Promise from relatives and friends? Houses and lands? Worldly dressing? Passport, visa, and traveling overseas? Is it promotion? Bring money so that you can be promoted. Bring money so that you'll be able to get questions to pass the difficult exam. What are you looking at? What is your heart running after? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give, or a woman give, in exchange for his soul? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Open your mouth and talk to God in prayer. And tell the Lord to do a new thing in your life. Tell the Lord to help you so that you will not exchange your salvation with the things of this world, with your holy living with the things of this world, like Esau. You not look back because the journey has become rough and tough. Like Lord, you will not look back. Move on. Look to the cross. Christ died for you. He has abundance and sufficient grace for you to make it to heaven. Don't listen to man. Listen to God. Our Father, we thank you so much for making us to know how dangerous it is to exchange the salvation, spiritual nuggets you have given to us for the things of this world. I pray that anybody who has heard you and is on the point of doing that, I pray that all such people will repent in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have already thrown away their salvation, I pray that they will be restored, even as they are praying and confessing unto you. Lord, I'm asking for grace, strength, and power for all believers to be able to stand steadfastly in the Lord, stand strong in the Lord, so that the devil will not be able to entice us to lose our faith in Jesus' name. Whatever troubles your people are going through, if it is poverty, you became poor, that we will be rich. I pray you supply all their needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Those who are discouraged, I pray that you encourage them. Whatever problem anybody finds himself or herself in, I pray that you stretch forth your mighty hands and touch your people and bring us out of all our troubles in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the name of the Lord be honored and glorified in our lives. Lord, I'm praying that this faith you have given to us, help us to hold fast that we will not lose our crown at last in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah.